Warning, this video contains content that some viewers might find disturbing. In 2023, the legend of Bigfoot continues to captivate the minds of many people around the world. This elusive creature, also known as Sasquatch or Yeti, has been the subject of countless sightings, photos, and videos over the years. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the fascination with Bigfoot remains strong, and many enthusiasts continue to search for clues to prove its existence. The lore of Bigfoot has become a part of popular culture, inspiring books, movies, and television shows that explore the intrigue surrounding this mysterious monster. But did you know that the Philippines has their own colossal cryptid, along with a few other vastly sized variants? And by the end of this video, I'll explain the surprisingly problematic racist history behind the most mischievously mountainous mumu throughout the motherland. The Capri These giant, hairy, dark-colored, 10-foot-tall monsters with glassy, plate-sized eyes typically reside in large balete trees and smoke tobacco out of their huge cigars. Although some have been known to sport wooden pipes the size of banana tree trunks, plumes of smoke so thick you would think it were spouting out of a chimney. They're commonly known to wear the indigenous northern Philippine loincloth known as bahag while others believe they rock magical belts that keep them invisible at all times, but other accounts suggest they use leaves to cover themselves, except on Fridays, in which then they would not. But as intimidating as these creatures were in stature, they didn't have a thirst for blood. The Capri don't seem to have a history of any particularly pernicious activity outside of some mild pranks. Catcalling, maybe some light stalking, a little kidnapping. All right, the Capri were Holes, which is why most believers consider them to be men. But unlike the Aswang, these tree giants don't have a desire to devour people. They just want to with them. The most infamous capre in the Philippines is the benevolent prankster Mr. Brown, rumored to live in the 100-year-old Baliti tree at the front entrance of the Malacanang Palace, the official residence and principal workplace of the President of the Philippines. Rumors of the giant began when one time, the Baliti tree was lit with thousands of flickering fireflies captured from some distant towns and released as a grand ephemeral gesture of a present for the then first lady. The tree was given heritage status via the late President Noinoy Aquino in 2011. The Capri are one of the few monsters of the motherland that are generally known to be non-violent. Just don't cut down their tree houses and acknowledge them whenever you pass by. A simple tabby tabby po meaning excuse me is expected otherwise you may be met with some misbehavior a quote from author nick joaquin recounting a story about mr brown told by president marcos children on dark muggy nights security men were sometimes startled to see their fellow guards frantically running about the grounds as though being chased by some invisible demon the victims claimed later the giant capri had wakened them then had gone about gleefully dropping ashes from his enormous cigar on their heads. The Capri were also known to dish out disorienting enchantments which would induce short-term memory loss, causing wandering travelers to lose their way in the forests or mountains they inhabited. Rustling tree branches on an otherwise calm night, loud laughter, smoke from the top of a tree, or seeing big red glaring eyes at nighttime. These are all signs of their incantation. In rare circumstances, they have the power to change proportions from that of a mannequin to that of a church tower. But one of the more interesting facets in Capri lore are their magical white stones. Should anyone come into possession of their quail egg-sized stone, the Capri will become docile and can grant wishes. Thus, if one can develop a friendship with a Capri, that person will have the ability to see the deceptive demon. Bigfoot is blurry. And that's extra scary to me because there's a large, out-of-focus monster roaming the countryside. That's right. In Ramos's taxonomic text, these larger-than-life loaves are actually classified as demons, which means there are bigger, more Bunyan-esque behemoths bumming around the backwoods. And before we continue with this video, if you have time, please visit the Momok merch store to check out all the fun merch options we have available. Like our new Prisoners of Tao Tao shirt based off the upcoming third installment of the Momok series. Links in the description. Back to the show. Giants. 
The Philippine giants are relatively harmless creatures that come in a variety of shapes and characteristics, but the majority of them share the same frame of an enormous uncouth human male and in a few cases female. In Iloko mythology, Angalo and his wife Aran are said to have been the first of the world's living beings. Some Iloko myths credit him with the creation of the world upon orders from a higher deity. This gigantic couple are reported to have had human shape, their heads reaching the sky. A single step of Angalo spanned the distance between northern Luzon and the Laguna de Bay area, and the earth shook under his tread. Today's mountains resulted from the mounds of earth that Angalo scooped up, and the oceans were created when he urinated into the bigger holes he made. Philippine giants are said to live near human habitations, and since few of them are man-eaters, they have frequent dealings with people. They eat human food which they cook in their own homes. In myth, these guys are usually protagonists. Tales have been told of children and animals playing tricks on them because they are so incredibly simple-minded. Boom. Roasted. A quick roll call from the assorted local legends. The Bicolano Burincantada is a giant with one eye in the middle of his forehead and two long tusks that extend from the sides of his mouth. This guy is similar to another giant, the Buniznis from Batangas, who is the featured villain in my second book. Mumu Lost in Anito, which you can purchase on Amazon. Links in the description. Gawagawin, the Tingian giant, has six heads. He carried a spear and an axe that were as big as half the sky. What is half the sky? There's also Gizurub, the vindictive Isneg giant, and his Apayo counterpart, Gisorub, who were the only reported man-eating giants. There was a tall man from Isneg who walked past the Apayo subprovince in one stride. His name was Kalapo, and he sounds like he could play hopscotch with the islands. Let me tell you about one Apayo giant, Sapwa, who was too large to marry any of his human neighbor's daughters. Ain't no way, brah. The sheer mechanics of it. Did I mention Sumerang from Iloko, the giant with a nose the size of two feet put together? And my personal favorite, the Philippine version of the great ape Uzaru, the Ikugan of Manobo folklore. The men with tails were fierce, colossal, warlike creatures whose skin was covered with long, soft hair. Even though their hands and feet were huge, they made very little noise as they moved throughout the vast woodland. Most inconceivable of all was the elongated tails with which they did startling things with, such as reaching out with it and choking a warrior who was about to attack them from the rear, while at the same time mowing down another in front. The term Capri has roots in the Arabic word kafir, which referred to non-believers, particularly atheists or idolists. Originally, it was used to describe non-Muslim Indians like Hindus, Buddhists, and Sikhs in South Asia who were often dark-skinned. Contrary to popular belief, the term did not originate in the Philippines. Instead, it appears to have been an ethnic slur that originated in the UAE or a similar context and later made its way to the Philippines through Spanish colonizers. These colonizers, who had interactions with the Moors, used Capri to describe indigenous ethnic groups with dark skin and features resembling black Africans. This is evident in the synonym Agta, which is another name for the Aate people considered the original Filipino inhabitants who migrated from Borneo around 30,000 years ago. Historical records indicate that the Spanish term Cafri, which originally referred to non-Muslims, evolved to describe uncivilized behavior in the Philippines. Due to the absence of the letters C and F in the Filipino alphabet, Cafri was replaced with K and P, resulting in Capri. This information sheds light on the origins of the term Capri and its historical connotations. Many of the scary stories told about Capris during childhood are rooted in real-life occurrences and have a basis in reality, challenging the perception of them as mere fiction or fables. The understanding of this background might lead to discomfort in using the term. Considering these historical complexities, the question arises. Does knowing about the problematic etymology of Capri impact our perspective on modern-day monsters? Should we embrace the term's evolving meaning over time, or should we consider cancelling it due to its origins? This topic sparks a debate on whether the term still holds significance and whether awareness of its history should influence its usage in contemporary discussions. Opinions on this matter may vary, and it's important to have an open conversation to explore diverse viewpoints. Please share your thoughts on this issue in the comments.
Thanks so much for hanging out. My name is Chaz, and this has been Momo Monsters of the Motherland. It took a lot of hard work, but I had just as much fun and can't wait to create more. If you had fun or like what you learned, please do me a favor and subscribe, comment, like, share, all that stuff really helps the channel. And hopefully the Algo Gods will look fondly upon us. Big shout out to Steve Wynn for helping with the music. Uh, check out his stuff on Spotify. Links in the description for that as well. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider contributing to our Patreon. Don't forget to check out the Moment Merch Store. There are links in the description for that. And remember, Yo!